Hi there, welcome to Radiant Art Inspirations, where you get easy, fun, and fast face paint tutorials and some product reviews. Today, we're going to do a review on a product that just came on the market, and that is the Chroma Caddy by Marcella Bustamante. We're gonna get into all of the nitty gritty on this new palette. Let's get started. I purchased the Chroma Caddy in purple, pink, and black. I'm gonna show you all of them. They also have teal, and these colors are specifically to help match your craft and go. If you don't have a craft and go, these colors are still very pretty. So let's start off with the material. The material is silicon. So it's flexible, but it's also very lightweight. If you have a craft and go, you wanna pack light because they're already heavy and then you have to carry that on, right? Even if you have a nether kit, you wanna pack light. It just makes your life so much easier. So this material is awesome. Here is my personal one for my mini black craft and go. The Chroma Caddy palette carries 24 colors, 16 grams for each paint. And I'm gonna show that in just a moment. And on the back, which is really interesting, and I'm actually gonna show it on a different palette because I also have pink right here, is it has a nice grip. I don't know if you can see that on camera. Ah, there it is. Okay, you can see it here and it, it feels grippy, meaning it's not gonna slide in your kit, it's not gonna move around nicely. It sticks to the surface nicely because if you do have a craft and go, when you're like moving it around, right, from one venue to another, things can move all over the place. This is the palette that I used to use. Yes, it holds a lot of colors. I think the brown just fell. This one holds a lot of colors, but it's very stiff. It's also very small, so it was difficult for me to sponge with the bigger sponges. But with your Chroma Caddy, which is a really nice size for all of your paints. It sponges a lot easier from what I've realized. I've taken this on the job, I did a test on it, and I like how much space there is to sponge, but also to like load up your brushes as well. Here is a surface that I got from my mini craft and go. As you can tell right here, it's metallic, it's super smooth, it's super slippery. Here is the caddy. I am moving it around, there is no tape, there is no magnets, and it's holding nicely. It has a good grip. But if you don't believe me, that's okay. Here, I'll take a look at the back, can you see it? Whoop. We're going to flip it on the matted side, which has a bit more of a grip compared to the metal side, and we're gonna do that exact same test. All right, look at this. That's pretty good. But you know what, let's do a comparison with my old palette, which is plastic and uh, it's hard and look at that. It slips and slides like it's nobody's business. We'll go to the magnetic side as well and look at this. Moving it around and it is, it's moving with me. And then if you want to get another one, it holds your small rainbow cakes and your small glitters as well. And I don't wanna tip it too much because they might fall out, but here it looks really pretty. So let's say you don't have space on the metal area of your craft and go, or if you don't have one, right? You can place all of your mini split cakes right here like this and they fit absolutely perfectly. Here, I'm gonna take this one out just to demonstrate how easy it is to remove and place back because it fits perfect. The Chroma Caddy also comes the little cover that you place on top of your palette. It has a QR code with all the socials, but it keeps your paints in place for whatever reason, they might move around. But if you do get the black version of the palette, it's very opaque compared to the pink and purple one, which are a little bit more transparent. 
So the black one is actually amazing to practice your swirls and teardrops, or let's say you're at a venue and it's very slow. This is gonna be your best friend to do all of the practice. You could even, if you really wanted to, make this your menu board. Write down princess, dog, Spider-Man, so on and so forth, right? And then just place it like that. It's very thin, it's very flexible. You will place it on top of your paint. You also have this string right here and you're going to place it together so that you get something like this and it holds nicely. If you over pot your palette, such as myself, because I did that the first time around, if you actually put the paint right at the line, this is going to stick, but if you do not fill up your palette all the way, like with this blue one right here, as you can tell, it has a little bit of space, it's not touching the top, you're gonna prefer that, because as you can tell, I just placed my lid on top of the palette and we're already seeing some colorful boxes on here. It is a preference if you do overfill, it actually, the lid sticks on really nicely to the paints, so you might not even need this, but if you like to keep things like really, really clean and pristine, you want to just slightly underfill your palette. If you have small paint like this, that's usually from Fab or from Superstar, it's going to fit perfectly in the palette. There is no need to cut and guess and splice. These mini ones are gonna be your best friend. But if you don't have mini ones and you have the bigger palettes, this is what I did. I got a post-it note and I measured it exactly on how big the square was, as we can see right here. And then I would trace this on the paint to give me a perfect square like this. Here's gray, for instance. And we just put it on top, right? And we would cut it, trace it, and then place it in the palette like that. You could do the same thing with a palette like this. You're gonna get that post-it note or that piece of paper that you already traced on that box, and you're going to place it right there and cut. Let me tell you this, the softer paints are gonna be a lot easier to pot than your hard paints. So paints such as Fab, Superstar, Paradise, these are really going to be beneficial when you're cutting and splicing if you are buying the bigger containers, which is like 45 grams when these pots only, when this palette only carries about 16 grams per color, give or take a little bit, right? So just keep that in mind to make it easier for yourself. You kind of want to go to the more soft type of paints. But don't worry, if you have more hard paints, you can also put those in as well. It will take a little bit longer to get them cut and placed in perfectly without cracking. But as you can tell here, I have one color. I think this is aqua color. I love that brand, but um, it doesn't do well with cutting and remolding. Like, that's not a thing for them. But these other brands that I mentioned, they look a lot better in this palette. It was a lot easier to mold them. Here's a really cool thing about this palette is that you can stack them. So I have my, my main colors, right? I'm gonna put the lid on that. And then I can place my amazing pink palette with all of my fun rainbow cakes and glitter. I put that right on top, as we see right here, put on the lid, grab one of the nice strings, right? And then you just close it up because it gives you that flexibility, these strings that are provided. And now I have two that fit very nicely in my kit, they fit very nicely in my craft and go, and it takes up a very little space and it's super light. For those that want to see the purple one, it is right here. It is very pretty as well, and it matches so perfectly with the purple Craft and & Go. And then here is that, how it looks completely empty. Let's take a look at the practice board slash lid. Here is a simple wipe, a baby wipe, and we're just gonna clean this up to show you how easy it is. Look at that, whoops came off really nicely. 
Now we're going to do some teardrop practice with a any kind of brush that you have loaded in white just to demonstrate to you how you can practice with your palette on your teardrops and swirls. So the texture, it feels very much like any type of practice board. It's a little bit slippery, so if you are a beginner face painter, it will take a little bit of getting used to. I get, it takes me a little while as well. But if you really wanted to practice, this is going to be really awesome on those slow events that you do. So on the black, you can see it very nicely because it's a very opaque color. Let's do the same test on the pink one, which is a little bit more transparent, as you can see here. Same brush, also loaded in white. Let's do some swirls and some teardrops to see how it performs. And while it's a little bit more opaque, it's doing well. Uh, because it is a little bit more slippery, just it's a bit more difficult to do your teardrops and swirls. It takes a little bit of practice, but once you get the feel and the vibe for it, it's gonna be really easy to practice on material like this, which is the majority of practice boards. That is it for this review. Do you like the palette? And if you do, which one's your favorite color out of the three that I showed you? There's also teal, do keep that in mind as well. But I'm overall really happy with the material, the flexibility, the grip on the back, and the lid that's also a practice board. It's, it's everything in one. What else could a face painter ask for? Let me know in the comments below what your favorite feature was about this. If you enjoyed this video, and if you're still scrolling through social media, take a look at our Instagram at Radiant Art Inspirations, where we post all of our step-by-steps and more right there. We also have a TikTok at Radiant.Art, where we have almost 600,000 followers, where we tell you true stories of what it's like being a face painter. That is it for today. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.